Hi, my name is Emily Summers and this is my timeline of special education. I became interested in special education after working last year um, as instructional support in the special education um, program at an elementary school in the district I live in and I'm excited to share with you what I've learned. I pulled up um, one of the most earliest um, schools that I could find for those that were special um, education students was um, the American Asylum for the Education of the Deaf and Dumb. Um, Reverend Gallaudet becomes the principal of the um, Asylum and Education for Deaf and Dumb in Hartford, Connecticut, and he serves as principal from 1817 until 1830. The first teacher training program that I found um, took place in the state of Massachusetts, and that was in 1839. So this is the first record I could find. There was an actual training program for teachers in general, um, not necessarily special education teachers. And when I searched for um, earliest special education or the term first special education in the United States, um, the time frame that I brought that was brought up was the 1890s, and that. This was the term special education and, and working with those students was completely different than what we look um, at special education as now. Then it was for delinquent prevention, um, but for students who are at risk. So not even necessarily at risk for um, anything intellectual, just um, maybe for being delinquent from school, for maybe being um, delinquent later on in life. So that's what they consider special education. Another form was focusing on trades. So not even necessarily anything educational, but on job trading that could be used um, in society. So making them useful, hands-on trades. And then also the term moral training for African-American children. Um, you see from very early on that just based on skin color, they were considered um, special education or atypical um, pupils. Um, the first um, time that I could find um, when searching for specific training programs is that in 1904 in New Jersey, there was the Vineland Training School, and that was specifically for teachers that were going to be working with pupils um, deemed mentally retarded. So this is the first time that I see any training um, specifically for teachers that are going to be um, working with those students. While looking um, and seeing all the different cases brought about um, to the Supreme Court, this one stuck out to me in 1919 because the Wisconsin Supreme Court found in favor of the Board of Education. Um, there was a student that was um, intellectually capable and um, was very intelligent, but had physical disabilities and it made the teacher and staff of that school uncomfortable. Um, he had um, some convulsions that happened, some drooling, and just was physically disabled and um, they didn't want to teach him. So the case was brought to the um, Wisconsin Supreme Court and they found in favor of the school district saying they had the right to say, no, your child cannot come to school here based on his disabilities. I also, um, first thing I don't consider when thinking of special education is the gifted program. And um, the first training program for gifted was in 1920 at Teachers College in Columbia University. And this is specifically working with teachers who are gonna be working with those students who were deemed gifted, working above average than their peers. Um, the Department of Special Education is formed in 1931, and it's because they deemed that there was a need to train and teach atypical children, that this was a large amount of our population and we couldn't just ignore them. So that's why the Department of Special Education was founded and established in, in 1931. In the 1950s, there's a lot of advancements that took place. Um, our nation in general went through a lot of change and a lot of growing and some growing pains during that um, time frame in history. Um, in 1950, the National Association for Retarded Children was formed. So this was something that was specific to those children that were deemed mentally retarded and an association for them to advocate for them. Um, in 1954, Brown versus the Board of Education. Of course, we can't talk about the 50s without that case and that it ruled that segregation was not constitutional. Granted, this was for race, based um, on race, but this did bring about a lot of change when it came to those um, children that were deemed um, 
children with disabilities or students with disabilities, that they too could not be segregated based on those differences and those disabilities. In 1954, the National Defense Education Act passed. And then in 1958, um, Public Law 85-926 is passed. And this is key and important because this was a federal law that was passed that there would be funding on the state level for training those teachers that would be working with the mentally retarded. So government funding to help train um, those educators. In the 1960s, um, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965 is passed by President Johnson. And this was actually part of his war on poverty. I don't think he necessarily knew the effect that this law would have and what it would um, transition into be. So this was to focus on the, the low, um, the high risk, the lower income um, population. And what stemmed from that is that there have been amendments, and this has long been the longest affecting um, legislation, le legislation in education ever. There's been so many amendments and, and additions added to this, and it all stemmed from 1965. And then the um, amendments of 1966 on that is that it was the first federal grant program for the education of children of youth and youth with disabilities at the local level. So there was funding before at the state level, there was um, attention brought to it at, this, at the federal level, level and at the, um, funding at the federal level, but this brought it to the local um, school level. Um, also in 1966, the Bureau of Education of the Handicapped and then the National Advisory Council, which is now known as the National Council on Disability was formed. In 1972, there was some congressional investigations that were brought about because of two cases, um, uh, Park versus the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and then Mills versus the Board of Education. And because of those cases, Congress launched an investigation which um, into the status of children with disabilities in the school system, and they found that these children were not receiving appropriate education. And because of that, and because of those cases, we were able to really move forward and begin making changes when it comes to um, appropriate education for these students. The Education for All Handicapped Children Act, Children Act was in 1975, and um, this is that they gained access to free education that would meet their needs. This would also become IDEA, which is Indi Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Some more significant amendments that I found while we're going through things that um, through history that I thought were of importance was in 1976, states must provide services to families um, who have children that are born with disabilities from the time of birth. So before this in 1976, there were services provided to them, but sometimes not until the children were three or even five years old and older. So this was the first time that states were required to provide services to these families at the child's birth um, from infancy, basically. And then in 1986, President Reagan um, passed a law that gave parents of children with disabilities more say in the development of their child's IEP. So before that, it was based on um, the educators and the staff, and parents did not have as much of a say. And this law allowed for the parents to have um, more um, say in their children's IEP. In 1990, um, something that I found very interesting and important is that traumatic brain injury and the word aut autism were added as new disability categories um, to public law. So before that, they were not included. And I can't imagine today, I work with multiple students daily that um, are on the autism sp um, spectrum, and to imagine them being excluded from any of these laws um, is, is crazy to me. So um, definitely 1990, that is, a very important law. And then also that there were specific changes made to ensure that a child's IEP and ITP um, were developed to help them transition. So during their schooling in the IEP was working to help them progress and then the ITP which helps them transition to post-secondary life, whether that's secondary schooling or some sort of job trade um, that we really were aiming for that. In 1997, the Education for All Handicapped Children's Act becomes the Individuals with Disabilities Act, which is what we know today. In 2000 and 
one, um, Congress um, passes and signs into law um, by President Bush in 2002, the No Child um, Left Behind Act. This was a law set into place um, academic achievement standards for at the state level and then um, the state academic assess assessments. So this is something I found to be very controversial uh, controversial while working um, with educators and that this is not a cut and dry topic. This is not a every child fits into this mold or this piece. Um, it, it goes much further and much deeper than that. And so this isn't necessarily a, um, a fix, an easy fix. Um, the IDEA Improvement Act of 2004, um, it increased the focus on accountability um, for educators and improved outcomes. They really emphasized reading and early prevention, which is something that still um, is not all at this point had not been really addressed um, as much. So we really emphasized the early prevention and then research based teaching by keyword highly qualified special education teachers. And finding when I started looking into going into special education, the requirements for special education are more than general education as they should be. And before this, um, it was not mandated. Rose's Law was in 2010, and this is to remove the term mental retardation and replace it with intellectual disability, which is so important um, to get that, that term out of there and put a more positive um, term in its place. Every Student Succeeds Act is in 2015. Um, this act replaced No Child Left Behind, so it's modified the state testing requirements and um, it's had states adopt a more challenging standards in reading, math, and science, which is what we currently have as our state assessments. And it gr has granted more power to the states and less to the federal government which is important. Um, so I believe it's a step in the right direction and not necessarily um, the, the end of, or the completeness of it. Um, where is special education going? So as I was going through and preparing for this, there's just so many things that um, IDEA um, progress has brought about, which is the um, higher quality of early prevention um, when it comes to students with this and children with disabilities. Um, now we have more students that are attending their neighborhood schools um, that have disabilities, which before they were bussed out and sent to other um, districts or other schools. Um, access to general education, that's what we want. We want to see um, children with disabilities in general education curriculum, and we are seeing more of that now. Um, we are seeing more higher um, graduation rates from, rates from high school and enrollment in post-secondary programs, whether that's a college or a trade school or even a, some sort of job training. Um, more inclusion is what I see, um, definitely more inclusion and adaptive learning approach to teaching. Um, better IEP um, attendance and parents and staff and importance placed on that. Um, I think there will be and should be more staff training for those in the SPED program and better awareness of what and who a special education student is, um, that just who, who they are and, and what that means and how that affects them um, is something that needs to be taken into consideration. And higher expectations of um, SPED or special education staff and students, um, setting goals for and higher education, higher expectations, excuse me, in education for these students um, can only benefit them. And then um, I have success for all is um, teamwork and training, um, inclusion whenever possible, setting goals and meeting them and how can we meet them, involvement and celebration together, um, acceptance by the school, by the staff and classmates and parents will lead to a more bright future for these students, um, but for everyone involved and seeing them succeed. And then finally, um, I have my references that I used. I really enjoyed um, learning all this. There's even more that I have that I've learned. And um, this is something that has definitely um, been um, important to me and I think definitely key in my education when it comes to understanding where special education has been and where it is going. Thank you.